evening. Good to see everyone this evening. I ask for the privilege of being able to open the service tonight because God needs an extremely big, humongous, loud song of praise for the rain. When, when, when a couple of tenths turns into two and three quarters inches, that's a pretty significant God deal, and we needed every, every, every drop of it that we got, and so, man, it's good. I'm just going to pray and thank him before as we open. God, we just thank you today that you're God, that you are in control. Lord, forgive us for our lack of faith when we doubt you, but God, we just so thank you for your provision, for your blessing. Lord, we thank you for the rain. And God, we just pray tonight that even there would be a rain in the spirit in this place as we lift our hearts and our minds and our lives to you. Have your way throughout this service. We love you and we desire you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and stand up. And... Amen. Go ahead and stand while we worship tonight. Maybe. Father's love We're destined to die Poured out for all mankind God's only son Perfect and spotless one He never sinned but suffered as if he did. All authority, every victory is yours. All authority, every victory.
blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Hey man, if you guys want to have a seat here between songs uh, tonight, we're going to have a quick word by Mr. Sharp, I believe, who's going to come out and talk about open house for a second before we do our offering tonight. So, I got this. Good evening. Here in just a few weeks, and coming in July 3rd, we have one of our most favored and long and enduring events that we've had here for so long, and it is our annual open house. This year, the theme is called a salute to freedom, and this year it's gonna be a little bit different. We're not gonna do things as quite as big, and we're gonna focus really main, just on the main service. The times for it are gonna be from five o'clock, it starts at 5.30 in the entertainment. We're still gonna have the entertainment in the tent, we're still gonna have the service and the pickers in there, and then we're gonna hear something from Pastor Palmer in the tent. What we need and what we're looking, oh, I'm sorry, I keep controlling it like as if I'm controlling it from here. Next slide, please, Chrissy. Oh, I guess I can do it too. There we go. Sign up, sign up is open now. Anna has put some tables back there to where you can sign up to volunteer in these areas. We've got decorations, stage setup, food, parking, greeters, childcare, which is the best area, set up and tear down, are some areas that you can do. You can sign up on the back table, which is over there, or you can actually go on the internet and you can sign up there that Anna has set up. We want you all to come and be a part of this great event. We don't want you to sit at home and not be a part of this. If you're going to be here, please sign up and come be a part of this. This is a great time to meet everyone from the community, to show them what we're doing, and to be just honest with you, This is a season of change for us. So we might have people coming and wanting to know, hey, what's going on here? And it might open some doors, some conversations and people coming. And we want everybody to be there and be ready. So even if you are serving, even after you're serving, say you did a shift in serving, please come with your family then. Don't just stay at home, come. You can still be available and you can still be there. You don't have to hide away and say, I did my service, now I have to go hide. You can be there, come and be part of everything. We want you there and we want you to enjoy it. And we will, um, more details will be coming here in the next week or two. We're, you know, three weeks away from it, not even. So there'll be some more details on what can come out, but please sign up. 
please don't wait till the last minute. Please don't let it be a week and say that we have all these things filled up. Let's get that, that chart filled up so we can ha- go out strong and you know, serve this community well, all right? We got any more updates? Oh, and I'm sorry. One of the other things, there is no three and five-year-old class tonight. We have some sicknesses that so, came through. So thanks, Mark. There, there is no three and five-year-old class tonight. We apologize. There were some sicknesses going around and it was just kind of last minute. So there will be no class tonight. But is there any other announcements? No, while those are coming, we'll, uh, I want to greet some visitors if we have any, and then we'll uh, just go ahead and keep going with the, with worship. So, um, if this is your first time in service with us, we just like to recognize any first time visitors we have. So, if we have any, could you raise your hand? We just want to clap for you. And, uh, we do have. Welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, we're going to pray and keep going here. So, Father, we do love you tonight, and we thank you so much for the awesome privilege it is to be in your house tonight, Father, to be witness to answered prayers tonight with this rain, Father. We uh, we don't take anything for granted that you give us, Father. Um, and God, we take this opportunity right now to, to give back to you um, what you've entrusted to us, Father, to, to play a part in building your kingdom as you would see fit. So, Father, take this money and use it as you please. In Jesus' name. Spinning a heavenly dance, oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. And I hear the sound of your voice, all at once it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God, all that you are is so Pray. 
presence. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by you. God, I run into your arms. An unshamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed.
So we sing out, lift our voice and cry out. Awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. us when we need. We thank you for this wonderful rain, God, that you don't just hear, you don't just hear our prayers and ignore us, God, but you answer them, God. And we give you all the honor and glory for you are the only one that is worthy of it. I pray that you would be glorified tonight, that you would open up all of our hearts this evening, God, and hear about your tender heart for our children. We thank you for all that you do, and we will give you all the honor and glory. In your name, amen. I was really hoping Mark would kind of start worship and just take a lightsaber and just, you know, kind of start worshiping with it, but he, I couldn't get him to do it. Or anything. He, did, he wouldn't quite go for it, but it was close. I was really kind of waiting to see which one of them would knock it over and see when it started buzzing off and over there. Well, my name is David Sharp. Um, I wear two hats. My, normal, my day job hat is over in the finance office over there, and then my nights and weekends hat is to lead the children's ministry with my wife called GPS Kids. I'm going to, you guys are going to have to remind me all night to do this because Chrissy, there we go. It's GPS Kids. GPS Kids is our children's ministry part of Harlan Community Church. Started back in 2014 with really just a vision of wanting to do something more with our children and really um, leverage and have a strategy for ministry that is directed towards our children. And the reason we did it is because our children are precious and our children are our greatest resource. There is no other greater resource than our children. But a lot of people might ask of, well, why can't the children just be in service with you? Which is a valid question. And you know, it's not a question that would be, dis would be dismissed lightly. So for, we're just gonna start from the, uh, the top and I'm going to read for you a few things of why we do what we do. And this quote comes from the Barna Institute, and it says, The current Barna study indicates that nearly half of all Americans who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior do so before reaching the age of 13, and that two out of three born-again Christians made that commitment to Christ before their 18th birthday. 
One out of eight born-again people made their profession of faith while 18 to 21 years old. Less than one out of every four born-again Christians embraced Christ after their 21st birthday. Barna noted that these figures are consistent with similar studies that it has conducted during the past 20 years. So basically what that means is that at the age of accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, from ages 0 to 13, there's a 43% chance. And that from 14 to 18 is a 21%. And 18 to 21 is 13 percent, and then it goes back up at 21 plus. And so the reason we wanted to do this and to start this is because we wanted to leverage that opportunity of that 43 percent, that we wanted to take at that time when they are so young, and I use the term, so moldable, and so ready to accept and hear the things that God has for them, and we wanted to give them the tools and resources and the surroundings that we could so that they could we could be part of that 43% with all of our children. So that's why we ended up starting GPS. Our mission is equipping kids to grow in relationship with Christ while partnering with parents to advance in authentic faith. Our biggest goal, and our biggest goal, I will say, and our mission on this, is the part when it comes with parenting. We know, and we'll get back into it a little bit um, later, that as parents, you are more important than we are when it comes to your children. Grandparents are more important than we are than, uh, than when it comes to your children. You have a b- greater chance than we do, but we'll touch on that a little bit. What do we believe is we have three beliefs. First, we believe that every child is made in the image of God. Now, first, you might say, well, duh, everybody's made in the image of God. But really, think about that. Every child is made in the image of God. Even that kid that's screaming and kicking his feet that is dragging out of church, Thomas Hutchins, when he was a kid, was screaming and dragged out of the church. He yelled from the church, pray for me, saints. He was made in the image of God at that moment, even though his parents may not have wanted him to be made in the image of God in that moment. Even the kid that is just the brattiest kid that you know was still made in the image of God. Even the kid that comes from a culture and a religion that we don't believe in was made in the image of God. And so no matter what, it is one belief that every child is made in the image of God. Our second belief is every child has the potential to learn about God, to relate to God, and to trust Jesus, and to trust and follow Jesus. We believe that it doesn't matter the kid's situation, that they, everybody has that potential and has that ability. Every child has that ability to trust and follow Jesus as their Savior. And our third belief, and my most important one, as I see, Thirdly, is the belief that every parent has a greater ability and influence to lead a child in their relationship with God. We focus that a lot in GPS. We're not the kind of ministry that says that send your kids to us, we will fix them. And we will do, and we're not the kind of ministry that says we have all the answers. We're the kind of part of the ministry where we want to say, no, we want to give you the resources we can so that you can lead your children so that you can take it to your own home and you can lead them the way that God has created you to do. And we were going to get on that a little bit. But what does that look like? Well, it starts back in Luke 2.52, which is our founding scripture of what we go off on everything. And in it, it says, Jesus became wiser and stronger. He also became more and more pleasing to God and to people. And in this scripture, you'll find most children's ministry, this is their... I guess you could say their founding scripture. A lot, of 90% that we've seen, this is there. Because it's a really good, it's the, really the only time besides the manger scenes that you see that Jesus as a child and his growing before he goes into his ministry. So it's a very good look, but it means a lot. It doesn't mean just uh, that little glimpse. In that little glimpse, there's a few things that you get in it. It says Jesus became wiser, and it relates to his intellectual growth. It says Jesus became stronger, and it talks about his physical growth. He became more pleasing to God, and that relates to his spiritual growth. And it relates to, and people, and it relates to his social growth. So in this one scripture, we see that Jesus grew in great standing with his intellectual growth, his physical growth, his spiritual growth, and his social growth. And that's what every parent wants of their own child. So again, even as a child, Jesus is our example of how we want our children to be raised and how we want our children to come out. So that's where we came up with our name, and this name came from Caleb Barton, who is a wizard of names, 
Uh, one day we were sitting across the table when we were first starting GPS. It wasn't GPS at that moment. We were just throwing out names everywhere. And Caleb's silent there for, for, I don't know, probably about a good 10, 15 minutes. Didn't say a single word. And Austin just says, what about GPS? And we're like, what do you mean? And he says, well, growing physically and spiritually, GPS. And we all sat there. I'm like, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good name. So that's where it comes from. So if you're ever wondering what GPS stands for, there is a kind of twist in the GPS device, but it means for growing physically and spiritually. And throughout this next year, we have a new program that's going to be coming out that we're doing. It's actually with our curriculum. They're changing kind of all of our things and how we do it and putting more backing to our lessons and how we present our messages and our stories. And how that's going to be presented is with these one priority and three relational motives. The one priority is love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the greatest commandment that Jesus gave in the two commandments. And that is why it is the first priority in all the lessons and everything that we teach. It is the first and it is the golden rule of everything that we do with GPS and our children's ministry. And then there's three relational motives. And what those are is that in every lesson, these motives echo throughout every lesson that is taught and that everything is told to the children. It is move kids to love God by inciting wonder, wonder, move kids to love life by provoking discovery, and move kids to love others by fueling passion. So love God, love life, love others. And that goes down to the one priority of the golden rule we have. What it drills down to, and I know this is a lot of information, and I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to rush to get to my favorite part. I'm not going to lie. There's a good part that I, I really have a favorite part of all this. But what this goes is is nine core beliefs. And in every lesson we do throughout every month, one of these core beliefs, if not two, will be in every lesson that we'll talk about. And these nine core beliefs is what we feel that every kid has to have instilled in them as their walk in faith. And I'm not going to read every single one of these. And I don't know if you guys can really see them from up there. Sorry, I tried to make it big enough so everyone can see them. But the nine core beliefs is design. What I see around me reveals a creator I cannot see. Image, I am created in the image of my perfect heavenly father who has an unending love for me. I'm going to skip and so go to faith. I believe in Jesus and will continually trust him even when life doesn't make sense. And go to restoration. God designed me to participate with him in restoring a broken world and community. I choose to live in the complexities of family and community because God values them. And what that looks like further we'll jump into. I'm going fast, I understand, but there's also a lot and we're limited time, so bear with me, is we also have three goals. We're also going to introduce our new names are. You know, we've always said GPS kids, but we've never really defined the age groups. So now we're going to be calling is GPS kids launch. And what that means is that is for our zero infants to K4. And we use launch because of GPS device. What do you do when you turn on a device? Come on, any IT guys, specialists, anything? You launch a device, you launch a program, Come on, anybody? Okay, there, you launch a device. So we start off on a GPS device, you launch it. So that's where we start off with our kids, we're launching. And our goals and our basic truths is really, it's what's goals. It's when they leave and go to the next age group, we want them to have those three basic truths down, that it's believed inside of them that God made me, God loves me, and Jesus wants to be my friend forever. We want them to go to K-5 with those beliefs. What that means is that we want them to go at K-4, which is four-year-olds, four and five-year-olds, we want them to already go with that starting relationship with Jesus. Now, that's a young age, but it's possible. And I do have a question. Is there anybody in here who would raise their hand that says they started at that young, that they found Jesus at that young? Chris says seven. I knew that. Debbie raised, come on, Debbie, there. See, Debbie's right there. It is possible, and it's a walk of the faith. And it's there, and they are so hungry for it and desire it more than anything. And the next one is GPS Kids Voyagers. This is for our elementary, our K-5 through 5th grade. Voyagers is because the next step after you launch it, you start on your trip. You start on your voyage. And so that's where we come with them. And the three basic truths then is the goals that when they leave and go on to the middle school, they will have these three core beliefs down is I can trust God no matter what, 
I need to make wise choices, and I should treat others the way I want to be treated. And all of these are what we want to be instilled in them as they walk. I mean, as a kid, can you imagine at a young age of fifth grade of knowing these things, that God loves me, that God wants to be my friend forever, that I can make wise choices and I should treat others the way they are. At fifth grade, having that instilled in you going up, can you imagine the life that you would live differently than you live now? I can imagine myself with that. So that having that instilled in you, you wouldn't, we wouldn't probably be in a lot of places that we ended up being in. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is just kind of a visual of what the GPS launch, which is the zero through K4, of what next year will look like. You can kind of see underneath each one, there is a core belief underneath it. So for August, it's design. For September, it's image. and October, it's connection. So for every month, there's one of those core beliefs that is instilled in every month and every lesson. And then for launch, or sorry, did I? I mix those up. <laughs> no, for voyagers, same thing. And the voyagers in the next age group, it's image and transformation, truth and community, and design and connection. This is just to show you what we're looking at doing for the next year. This starts here in August. Our year goes from August to July. What does that physically look at for GPS? Well, that's nine different services per week. We have one child care for infants every service. We have three classes for toddlers and preschools every service. Or no, yeah, three classes for toddlers and preschools every service. One elementary large group on Sunday mornings and nine elementary small groups on Wednesdays. What that is, that's over 100 kids every week, infants from fifth grade. That's a lot of kids. For our church size, we got a lot of kids. Dave Barton's family contributed about half of those. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, we got a lot of kids in this and everything. When they're all in the service with there, we have practically our chairs are back there to the wall. And it is something that is a blessing. That is why it is so important for us to distinctively do this with our children. Because we have such a great resources here. We actually have a resource that most churches don't have at our size. They don't usually have this plethora of youth and children running around like we do. And we don't want to lose. We want to take advantage of that. We want to create men and women of God to the best that we can. Even in our flaws, that we want to do that. Oops. Here's my favorite part, now that I've rushed. Now I'll slow down a little bit. How we want to support the household. I say this is my favorite part because um, I'm a parent. There, it's that simple. I've got, if you haven't noticed, I've got four boys that run around like wild animals and everything. All this stuff up here that didn't just come from a store that came from my house. And I could probably fill the stage 500 times up with all the stuff and toys that we have. And so when it comes to how do we want to support the household, it is something that is near and dear to my heart because besides just leading a children's ministry, I have to personally and practically do it in my own household. And so it doesn't mean that it's just a magically, woof, or do it in ministry, that guy just magically they fall in line. No, I still have to practically do those same things as any other parent. And for George Barna, again, he's one of my favorite guys when it comes to statistics because he does do pretty good at it. And why it's so important for every household is what he says in here. For instance, among Christians who embrace Christ before their teen years, half were led to Christ by their parents, with another one in fifth led by some other friend or relative. Comparatively, few accepted Jesus in response to a minister's personal prompting, 7%. And only one out of eight cited a special event as the turning point in their journey. Among those who mentioned events, about half identified a church service. Just 1% mentioned media evangelism or special situations as being responsible for their conversion. So what that looks like in just plain numbers is of who led them to salvation is 70% is parents and family. Now I got to be honest with you. How many of you parents that are in here have ever thought of, I, I've ever thought, well, I just need to get them to church so that way they can, you know, pray and have that salvation call. Have you ever thought, I mean, I'm just going to raise my hand. I, I've done it. Of saying like, you just need to go to church and come in there and do it. You know, it's, it was a few years ago. I was realized like, why do I have to do that? I can sit here and have this conversation with him myself. We can do this right here in my own house and we can do this right here. And this statistic says that there is a better chance for that than the child walking down this aisle and doing that and accepting it there. It doesn't take away from the specialness of this. But 70% of kids are led to salvation by their parents or someone in their family. That's a big difference. 
7% is by pastor or minister. Special event or church service, what it said is 22%, which is still good. And media events or other is just 1%. But it's at 70%. 70%. I mean, that's, that's a really big, important thing. That shows you how important kids look to their parents and their family for their leadership and their spiritual walk with Christ. They don't, want, they don't really want it, honestly, a lot of times from a pastor or somebody there. They want it from you. They want it from those people that lead them every day of their life. And this quote, it says, when you make faith a part of the rhythms of life, it becomes more fluid, more natural, and more every day. And Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, it's kind of a long scripture, but if you have your Bible, if you want to open it with us, because we're going to stick on this for a little bit. We're going to dig into this. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, 9, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk to them when they sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. There's a lot of you shalls. So I kind of broke it down on there of what it says. It says, you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. You shall, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, bind them as a sign of your hand. When you rise, be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So what does that mean? It means all those you shalls is a purpose, is a strong and intentional faith in your day-to-day -day life. That's what it means. It's not a bunch of commandments of you do this way, you do that. What he was trying to speak to us and say is that it is an intentional faith in your day-to-day -day life. It's when you wake up, it's when you go to sleep. It's when you're walking with your child. It's when you're at a sporting event and you're playing baseball. I mean, we're big into that right now. That's why I brought a baseball glove. Is a sporting event is a good time to teach your child about the biblical principles because most children do not like to lose and it gets a little furious with that. So I, at least my children do and they, it gets a little competitive and everything. And a sporting event is a great time to sit down and have a conversation with them about loving your neighbor, because sometimes they don't want to love their neighbors or their teammates at that. So it's a great time. But what it also means is that intentionally looking for ways in your everyday life to teach them and to instruct them. Now, how many of you know what one of these things are? I know, I'm sure all of you know what these are because they're all over the news and they're the rave. And if you don't have one, you're practically not successful child in life. I mean, they're, they're a little fidget spinners. I mean, you gotta have them. And so I'm not a big fan of them, but there's the thing, Hudson, Come here, Hudson. You come here. I need, can you, I'll give you this fidget spinner. You, <laughs> Hudson, can you come here? You don't want to come, man? Addy or Serenity, you want to come? Serenity, come here. Can I, do, do I have any children in here that would be willing to come up here to earn a fidget spinner? Jacob, come here, bud. Come here, Jacob. Everyone give Jacob applause. <laughs> All right. So Jacob, have you ever heard of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? You never heard of that? You ever heard that there's three parts of God? Yeah, we're getting in theology here. It's a little bit young, but we're in there. Have you ever heard that there's three parts of God? Have you ever heard that? Is that kind of confusing? Is that three parts of God? What if I told you it's like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's three different parts, right? Three different circles. What happens when I spin it? It lights up. It lights up, but what else? Can you see the three parts? Yes. Can you see all three of them? You can? Well, okay. I'll give it to you. You can kind of see it, but does it make one big circle? Yeah? Kind of like one big circle, like it's all in one? Yeah. So that's kind of like how God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all the same. They are all in one, just like this fidget spinner. So when you spin it, you can remember that God is all in one, and he is able to take care of all of our needs and all those things. 
All right? All right. So you strategically leverage the things that are going out in our world right now. Fidget spinners is a big thing. So I'll, I won't lie, that was not original thought. I definitely stole that from somebody. I'm not that creative. So, but it's something when I saw it, I was like, man, that's pretty good. And everything, when you see that, you know, you, it was a good lesson to give to them and that you can do. So we'd make it an intentional part of our life. And you have to be aware and looking for that. With GPS, we're not just a Sunday thing. We want to be GPS as part of your everyday walk. It doesn't mean that every day you go to your kids and say, well, we do this in GPS, that's how you do it. It means we want you to use us and our resources every day in your household that, so that it can give you the advantage of leading your children on the walk of Christ, towards Christ and the walk after they receive Christ. So there's a few things that we have that we can help you with that. There's a new app that is halfway depressing. Uh, it's not halfway depressing, it is depressing that's called the Parent Q app. What it is, is it has on it every weekly lesson that we do. When it comes to the new week, it has the lesson in it, and it even has the video in it, the lesson video. What's depressing about it is, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up here, but it wouldn't matter, you can't see it or another, is it does what this does. It takes this, ball, this jar of marbles, which represents how many weeks you have your children when they're born. So this is how many weeks you got with your children when you're born. And that app, every week that ticks down, you lose a marble. And it goes more and more and more. For my nine-year-old that just turned nine, when I opened up the app, it's hit the mark where he's halfway done until he graduates. And that was depressing and old. I was feeling kind of old. To see that half of his marbles were gone and that they weren't there. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John Graw, for that. <laughs> And on the app, it shows that, and it does that. So we're going to throw on the video real quick and show you just a glimpse of what that is. From the day your child is born to the day they graduate, you have 936 weeks. 936 weeks of soccer practice and homework and teaching them to use deodorant. 936 weeks to instill values, to build character, and to prepare them to face the world. You want to be a great parent, and we're here to help with each moment of parenting goal. Driving your fourth grader to practice. Saying goodbye to your 10th grader as he's walking out the door. Eating tacos in the kitchen with your seventh grader. Tucking your toddler in at night. These moments happen every week and we want you to be aware of the time you have left because when you are, you do more with the time you have now. We cue you with easy, just-in-time ideas of things to say, things to do, and things to think about to connect with the heart of your child. Our cues are grounded in God's big story, so your child can discover the power of faith in those everyday moments of life. Every cue fits the context of your child's developmental phase. We cue you when your high schooler won't leave their room, your middle schooler won't pick up their clothes, your two-year-old won't stop talking. We help you understand these moments, and we help you connect. You only have 936 weeks. You can't afford to waste them. Parent cue. It's what we do. Download it for free today. And that app is available for free. There is no cost to it. And I really would encourage, if you have parents, and it works for the ID318 as well. So if you have older kids, it works for them as well. Um, and I would encourage for every parent in the place to download it. My children have about twice a week. They take it, and they just go watch the videos that are on it from that lesson. And it is that week's lesson video. Um, for the elementary kids, they've never seen it before, so it's actually something new. Um, for the little kids, it's the lesson video that they do watch on Sundays, but they enjoy it. It's really great. Seth, I found him hiding in our closet watching it yesterday. And Seth, of course, he was hiding in the closet because he didn't want to see he had the iPad. But still, he was watching the video, so it made it okay. Um, but there, still, it, it actually it was, well, at least you were doing it because you wanted to watch something good and not something like, I don't know, just crazy stuff. But the purpose of it is it's designed to help parents and family connected with the heart of their children every week through the Bible-based content and practical things to say and do with their children. 
The content is age-specific based on the number of weeks a child has left till graduation. The great part is, is it gives you ideas, things to say while they're in the season. Every child changes and goes through different things as they age. I can't do the same thing even with my nine-year-old that I do with my seven-year-old. I can't say the same stuff. And it changes. And what this app does is it knows that. It knows that you can't do that. So it does give you the right stuff to say. It gives you the right things to teach. So I'd really encourage you to do it. Jump on there. You can be as depressed as I do when you find out how old you are and how many marbles that you have left. Ha ha, John. Um, but you can just go on there and try it out. And I guarantee you will not be disappointed. We have some other resources that we are love to provide to you. We do these monthly handouts that Scribble so nicely does for us every month that your children do get every month. There's these devotional cards that come out every month. And no, I understand it's paper, but it's there for you to use. It is there for you to help if you don't know how to do devotions in your household. If you don't know where to start, this is a good place to start. I will be honest with you, in my household, we don't use this every night. We have a set devotion, but it is fun, something to do, and it's something to do that is age-specific to where they can go do themselves, to where it's something that it's down to their level, to where even if it's a night that it's busy, I mean, how many of you have nights to where it's just like you can barely get your kids tucked in bed, to where you just really need something that you wish they could just take themselves and read and do a devotional by themselves. This is something like that that can help. We also give something that's called a parent cue paper that shows you the entire month of what's going on, every lesson of, during the week. And on the back, it has some other tips and ideas of what you can do with them and how you can do it. What we're also gonna start doing that will be really good and we're excited about is a new Facebook page. That we're gonna start a new Facebook page that's gonna be closed just for our community and our members. That it's gonna be posting things like the devotionals, things like the parent cues and those things and information. So that way you guys can be up to date on announcements and some people just don't like paper and it's okay. I'm not a paper guy. I got an iPad. It's, uh, it's okay to not like paper, but we want to be able to provide to you as much resource as we can that meets your needs in the time that we're in. We also do a weekly newsletter that has the same information and also updates. So please, if you get that, you know, don't delete it. Just, you know, kind of maybe just open it, look at it, and just, you know, take a glance at it. There are announcements on it, anything that's going on that week that you might need to know. Um, just take a look at it and see. Um, we also have a lot of other resources. We've never talked about this. And this doesn't just go for GPS, but this goes for ID318. Um, there are a lot of documents that with our curriculum that are provided, sorry, that are provided that are called other parent care resources. Um, there are subjects that are things that might be hard to talk about, like sexual integrity, like technology, like a crisis or bullying or divorce even, and just life transitions and more. And there are these really good, just helpful, age-specific ways, if that comes up, to have those conversations. And they're very handy. And I will tell you, I have used them in my own household, and they have turned out great and fantastic. I wouldn't come up here and tell you to use them if I hadn't used them in my own household yet. And so I would use those. If you ever have something and I put up there, personal communication or questions, send us, ask us. You, we got a whole team of people. If you see somebody with the GPS team and you have a question for them or just say, you know, I, this is what we're seeing in the kids. We can communicate that, and maybe we can provide you something that can help you with that. We don't have all the answers. I can't just wave a wand and say, poof, there you go. But we can help you to start on that edge. Every kid is different, and every household is different. So it doesn't, you can't just have a magical formula that takes care of everybody. But we can try to help in the areas that we can give you. And lastly, here's where I put my sales pitch on. We need help. We have a lot of kids, 100 kids to be exact, and a little bit more actually, and that number grows every day, <laughs> every day. And we have a lot. Um, and I would like you to see what some of our GPS volunteers think and how they do there. Some, most of these people that have been with us have been doing this for quite some time, and I asked them instead of coming to the stage to send me something of what they thought, so just bear with me. This one is from Anna Schwarzentrooper, who does our preschool, Sunday school, and has for many, many years. Yes, your kids will hear a Bible story in Sunday school, but can I tell you a secret? What we're really doing is playing together, praying together, singing together, reading together. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. Learning together that God made us, he loves us, and Jesus wants us to be, to be our friend forever. That's building the church, and we can learn a lot from them. From Elizabeth Sharp, who I think pretty fond of. Um, children are so curious about the Bible. 
We have a desire to know what's in it and to hear the stories told over and over again. We are building their view of God and what a privilege it is to be some of the first ones to tell them about Jesus and how awesome God is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not changing this, am I? Christy, you're so awesome. You're doing it for me. One thing I would like for the church and parents to know about their children is their love for prayer. Every time I ask for a volunteer to pray, their hands shoot up and they all want to turn. They enjoy praying for one another. If someone has a tummy ache or if someone is sick or needs safety for traveling, it's really precious and part of. I had a personal story on this. It was a few weeks ago. Um, it was actually more than a few weeks. It was a few months ago. I was just having a hard day. You know, we've had a lot of hard days. Let's just be blunt about it. We've had a lot of hard days over the last while. I was having a hard day. And so uh, it was late. And so my wife was gone. And you know what? I just said, boys, can you pray for me? And they did. They came and just laid their hands on me and prayed for me. Man. <laughs> Probably meant more to me than any adult praying for me, to be honest with you. <laughs> and so... Your kids can pray. <laughs> they can pray really good too. And let me tell you, their prayer is innocent. And I believe a lot of times their prayer is more innocent than our prayers and is heard more than ours. So always be encouraged by their prayers. This is from Leslie Shire, who is our elementary small groups leader. Children's ministry is a lot like parenting. A lot of work and repetition with occasional moments where you think they might be getting it. All of a sudden, you hear a story about how God showed up for a child, or you watch a face light up because they understand something new about God. Those moments are why we do what we do, and they are. From Amber Cup, who's been doing our preschool Sunday night class, these kids are going to make a difference in this world one day because of the seeds planted in their lives. They already make a difference in my life every week with a simple hug or an I love you. Their love for God is evident and amazing. And from Elisa Bach, who is another just faithful servant in everything she does. Everything that we do is to bring your children to the saving knowledge of Jesus and to know that they matter to him. When they can trust this absolute truth, then they learn that they can change the world using one kind word, one kind action, and one consistent decision every day. We work on learning that it doesn't matter how they feel, but that God is to be honored and worshipped and marveled at in every day's. And lastly, and probably one of close to one of my favorites, because um, for any of you that know Thomas Crawford, he's not a man short of words. Uh, he's not. He's a man of good and elegant and three and four syllable words. So he does our opening over there at GPS and Large Group, and usually we're back there cracking up because he uses words that the kids are just like, "What did he just say?" And we're just back there laughing so hard because we know it just flew right over their heads. But. He said, working with the children here at Heartland is by far the most rewarding and enduring activity that I have ever found myself a part of. I am truly blessed to help bring the history, the wonder, the objective truth, and the joy inherent in the gospel of Christ to these children. It is absolutely humbling and awe-inspiring to be a part of a group devoted to ensuring these children come to know the truth, the light, and the hope of the world at such an early age. We have a wonderful group of volunteers and it really is everything they say. I, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't that. And everything, Daniel, you can't start getting emotional on me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop looking at you. <laughs> we want you to say yes to the next generation. And we do need your help. It does take a lot of work, and we want to do more, believe it or not. We feel like we haven't done everything we need to do. And we want to do more, but to do more, it takes more people. And to do more... It takes, we don't want to spread anybody too thin, to be honest with you. And we want, we ask for people to come and join us and play a part. And I'm not going to go through all this because we are out of time, so I'm not going to weigh everybody down with this. So I'm going to just go through this. Next week, I'm going to have cards out that are going to go through all these different ages and what they do and what goes on in them and how we do things. But next Wednesday, what we're going to do is call the Say Yes campaign sign up. To our next Wednesday, we're going to have cards that are at the entrances that are going to list all those that you can sign up for, to volunteer for, coming this next year, starting in August. And I would ask that throughout this next week, if you could pray about joining us, you won't be disappointed, I promise you. Those times, it can be tough, and it can be enduring, and yes, sometimes you're just like, ah, 
This child won't start crying, mainly mine probably, but it is worth it. It's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. If I could pull every volunteer up here, they would tell you it's worth it. We don't do it just because we want to get out of church. We do it because we want them to have a devoted faith towards Christ. And their faith is so innocent and encouraging. It's unbelievable. We got sound. Half of people who will ever Hold on. We'll start that over. How important is children's ministry? Well, more than half of people who will ever believe in Christ will do so by the age of 12. And by the time a child is nine, their basic moral foundation has already been formed. By age 13, a person has formed their first basic beliefs about the nature of God, the reliability of the Bible, the existence of an afterlife, and the everlasting love of Jesus Christ. Through children's ministry, we have a chance to engage the hearts of these children when they are most open to the gospel. We are able to step into their lives through all the gifts like teaching, serving, administration, and evangelism. You could get a chance to share the gospel with a child for the first time in his or her life, or help them form their first thoughts of who God is. Please know we don't want this to be an obligation. We want this to be a pleasure. We want you to volunteer because you want to help your church raise its children as you raise your own. By helping us in children's ministry in any capacity, you help them see that Jesus is real. Sorry, technical diff. You got it? All right. Isn't that great? God really has given us a wonderful resource in this great group of people and given us a wonderful treasure in our children. Think about a hundred children. A church of about four or 500 people, that's a lot of children. Great responsibility, and God really has. There's a lot of, we've already read some scriptures and great other scriptures that really talk about the, the command of God and the blessing that we have in God to be able to take care of our children. So we wanted to be able to say that tonight. Here's the other thing about our children. Our children never quit being our children, no matter how old they are. And so tonight, before we end, we have one of our own, uh, one of our recent high school graduates is getting ready to enter the service uh, on Sunday, actually. He'll, he'll, in, he'll be inducted into basic training on Sunday, Justin Hutchins. And a couple of months ago, I just really felt very strongly impressed that when it was time for Justin to head off to the service, that we as a church needed to gather around him and pray for him. This is a big step. And so, Justin, if you're, I think you're here somewhere. Justin, come on up. Hutchins family, come on up. We've got some leaders. I've called several, got a hold of several people. Come on, let's just gather around Justin. You know, uh, um, Justin's been here for a number of years. He joined the Hutchins family as a young child, really. He's been here for a long time. And going into the military is a big deal. And I really have felt like that as we pray for him, there's just that God is really wanting to come and make himself known even more to Justin in the midst of it. And so we could just come gather around him and lay hands on him. And church, if you just raise your hands towards him, we're just going to pray. God, we thank you for this young man. Lord, we thank you that you brought him into our lives, brought him into the Hutchins family. And Lord, we just pray that as he enters into uh, the service on Sunday, uh, in practicality, in the, in, the, in the real reality of life. Lord, we pray that you would come and be with him. Lord, in the midst of this time, you would come and speak to him. Lord, you'd put a hedge of protection around him. Lord, you'd help him to know the depth of the love that his family has for him and that his church has for him. And most importantly, the love that you have for him. 
God, we know that entering in the military is not always easy and very difficult situations may arise. And Lord, I just pray that you would meet him in the midst of that and he would be drawn into a real relationship with you. Help him to know you, to experience the reality of who you are. And Lord, we just pray tonight and we impart a blessing upon him in these days that lie ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go with us and go with God, Justin.